Rescuers battle a brutal storm in search of a missing yacht. A group of fishermen try to outwit fishery officers. Basically you've got 311 oysters and you're actually only entitled to 50, 50, 50. And brothers cause double the trouble. I thought you said there's no more fish. In Whangarei, the Northern Electricity Rescue helicopter team has been called to action. A 12-metre catch, the Cheval de Mer, is set off its EPU, or emergency distress beacon, off the coast of the Kaipara. It struck problems a couple of days ago. Its uh, sails are torn and uh, has no motor. So we're going to drop some things out to them, some food and uh, some communication stuff, and see how they've uh, fared overnight. The Cheval de Mer left Nelson for Tauranga seven days ago. On board is skipper Pete Deacon and crew Bill Clagg and Richard Hope. We don't have any indication that they what might have happened, so uh, potential for, the, for them to have been rolled by what, the waves or actually washed against the rocks. So what colours are you we looking for? White. That'll be hard to see, and it won't have any sails, but I guess not likely to anyway. Nobody has heard from the disabled yacht for about 12 hours. Got to see if you can get them on the radio. Cheval de Mia, this is helicopter Halibed 1. The response is an ominous silence. It's bluff oyster season in the deep south, an industry worth approximately $18 million to the Southland region. So it makes sense fishery officers are determined to protect it and are checking recreational vessels in the Fovo Strait. G'day, how are you? <laughs> oh no, is it right? <laughs> First inspection of the day sees a couple of good old southern men struggling to catch blue cod, but making the most of the oyster season. No blue cod at all? Oh, we got... Here. We just got here. Yeah. We just been out and got some oysters. Yeah. And we just pulled in here and we've got some oysters sorted and we've got about there hundred in there. The daily allowance for oysters is fifty per person, but these men have a few extra. And these ones we've got to take back out. They're all legal. We'll, we'll drop those out if you want. They'll be fine. Okay. Because they were actually separate from there anyway. That's the reason uh, I'm believing you. If they, if they were all together, yeah, yeah. yeah different again, no. Yeah. Uh, no, exactly. That's beauty, thank you, gentlemen. Yep, no, no worries. Problem. Okay, see you later. I'll give those guys a bit of a doubt because for a starter, they actually had their 100 quite separate from these 20, and they tell me that we're going to put them back. There's no reason to, to think that they actually weren't going to. But Mike's flexibility is about to be tested. How are you, gentlemen? Fisheries. You've been out there having a bit of a dredge, eh? Yes, got the couple there. That's the way. So, so what'd you end up with? Uh, about 50 each there. Yeah. About 50 each? Yeah. Yeah, that. Been all right? Yeah, good. Actually, you want to pull them up for us? We'll have a wee look, eh? Yeah, yeah. No so you, 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 who's been counting them? Oh, yeah. You all had a go. You all had a go. Oh, you need three to count them. Yeah. So what do you got for, um, for your sizing? Oh, it's just used there. Uh, so you haven't even gone by eye, you haven't actually been going yeah. sourcing? Yeah. Hope it's good, hope it's working. Measuring by eye or eyeometer, as the men are calling it, is a risky business. The slightest miscalculation can be very costly. Let's have a wee look, eh? Hey. Your eyeometer's working bloody well yeah, so yeah, far. So that's 50. Put those in this bar, this one here. That's one feed. Right. But there's a problem. As the count continues, it's obvious these chaps are well over their daily limit, and the tails begin to surface. Six, eight, so we're, we're up for two days, aren't we? Yeah. Yesterday's catches here, too. I think there's 300 here. So now you're saying there's 300? Yes, Yeah. No, it's all of a sudden you say you've been well, there two days. The I'll spot it, I'll spot it, the island will stay on. Yeah, anyway, let's just count these out first, all right? Even if these men have been out for two days, yesterday's catch should be bagged and tagged. Right, that's 311 oysters. And one scot, which is out of season. Yeah, if there's only one. It doesn't matter. Basically, you've got 311 oysters and a scallop, 
and you're actually only entitled to 50, 50, 50. 20 kilometres off the Kaipara coast, the rescue helicopter has spotted the Cheval de Mer. It's still afloat, but with a broken motor and ripped sails, it's floundering in the storm. Your radio is very, very weak. Confirm you're not in any distress. We're really struggling down here now. The captain's home video footage shows both a crew and a boat in bad shape. Ooh. All getting exhausted. The main cell's gone. The Genoa's torn. We're not eating. What food there is is nearly rotten. And uh, we've got a bit, little bit of water left. So if we can hold our cells together. The crew on board are hoping that another boat will be able to tow them to safety. But because of the dangerous conditions, there is bad news. The tow boat hasn't been able to cross the Kuiper Bar to get to you, and they're asking if you, you are capable of um, holding on for until conditions improve, which could be 24 hours or more. Um, we're really struggling. But things are going from bad to worse for the three men on board. We have one back injury on board. Uh, copied. The only way to remove the injured sailor is to winch him off the yacht, but in these conditions, it may be impossible. In Fovo Strait, fishery officers are dealing with three men they've caught with well over their daily legal limit of oysters. Basically, you've got 311 oysters and a scallop, and you're actually only entitled to 50, 50, 50. But we've just finished um, trawling. We haven't had time to sort through anything, really. We've been working hard to just get this. Just to... So what are you telling me? Well, we might, the count might have been accurate because we haven't really had time to do We're going back. We're going back. You, you told me that all three of you already so, counted. Uh, you told me that all three of you counted when I hopped on the boat. Well, no, 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 hang on a minute. No, you didn't say rough count at all. You said each one of you three counted well, these horses. No, 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 I asked, I asked, I asked, I asked who counted. And you said all three of us. They should only have one day's entitlement. They've had two days' entitlement with them with no way to actually um, prove otherwise. And the, and, the, and the burdens of proving that is actually on them. I can see where you're coming from because we can't, we can't prove to you that we stayed on the island. Well, you possibly could. What about your families? Could they verify it? Probably could. Uh, have you got family uh, on the island at the moment? No, not, not on the island. Where are you going to see your family? We've got them now. So when did no, you leave? they're not there. I'll tell you, they're up there oh, at the this. sports. Right. Leave it with me. You guys have got to know, though. Yeah, well, like, we do. The group's story is becoming less plausible by the minute, and without the testimony of the sport playing family, things aren't looking good for the three fishermen. They're all treated like an offence at the moment, is it? Yep. It, it, on the face of it, isn't it? Mike and his colleagues separate the men for formal interviews. So, did you count them? No, you didn't. So, who counted them? Well, I'm not sure. With the skipper remaining tight-lipped, Mike's attention turns to the other fishermen on the boat. So you didn't take any part in the bridge, no, just did. Okay. It seems someone's trying to avoid any of the blame. It helps us to the dredge, so, so, so he did steer it, and, he, and you're saying he did, he did lift the dredge, help lift the dredge. It's only him saying he didn't. Well, that's probably a bit of a conflict there for starter, isn't it? Is it really? Well, doesn't that, doesn't that make sense? If he's saying he didn't, and you're saying he did, a bit of a, there's a bit of a conflict in there, isn't there? Seeing that these men are willing to debate the issue all day, Mike decides it's time to move on. Well, yeah, gentlemen, what we're going to do is we're going to take 161 oysters, we're going to leave you with 150. That's your 50 each for today. OK, and we're going to get the rest of it sorted out. But we are going to take the other, the excess. So tomorrow, tomorrow on our way home, yep. we, can, we can get it. Another 150, can we? You get 50 a day. The men may have lost their excess catch, but they still don't believe that 150 oysters are enough for hungry southern men.
Well, Alright gentlemen, you'll actually hear from us um, not too far away. Well, I'll catch you guys. The men were each fined $500 for possessing more than twice the daily limit for dredge oysters. On the windswept coastline of Mutawai Beach, fishery officers are running an operation doing spot checks for illegal fish and have just pulled over a four-wheel drive with a net stashed in the back. Were you netting, were you? Yeah. Do you know what size your mesh is? It's a no. mullet net. It's a mullet net. A mullet net can only be used to catch certain types of fish, something the man appears to have no clue about, looking at the fish in his chilli bin. Of course you've got a snapper and you're, you've been fishing with a net yep. and your mesh size is, is the incorrect mesh size for snapper. You see where a problem can occur? But the man has a most unlikely excuse. He swapped mullet for gurnard and snapper. Yeah, I gave them some mullet for bait yep. and they gave me the gurnard and the snapper in return. This story is getting fishier by the minute. It's just some bloke. Um, down the beach. It's quite fishing. And on a beach almost 50 kilometres long, a description like that isn't going to help his cause. And neither is his lack of knowledge when it comes to netting. All right, well, we'll just have a measure, mate. I'll tell you now it's 60. Okay, you know a drag net's not allowed to be 60? I have no idea. Net's got to be um, 40 metres. So the fence that we've got is using a set net to catch mullet, or using it as a drag net. With an offence hanging over him, Suddenly, the man isn't too sure about anything. Well, well, I've never measured, so, I so, so, okay, now we'll measure it because I'd, I'd hate, I'd hate to give you, I hate you to give you a warning for an offence that is not an offence, okay? Well, that, that's fair. And it's certainly looking like a 60 metre net. And with that, our man's lack of knowledge costs him his catch. Yep. Taking these mullet back because the uh, the net wasn't um, up to standard. And with regard to the fish involved in the swap, Chris gives the man the benefit of the doubt. Write out a warning for you. Give you a warning, and that's as far as it's going to go, OK? So it's not going to be a fine. While Chris heads up the beach, he comes across a couple kite fishing. Hi, so I'm Chris, just fisher officer, just yep. Minister of Fisheries, doing general inspections. Do you know your size limits? And... Yeah, they've got a little thing. Oh, OK, got a measure. Cool. An inspection of their catch bag reveals a couple of mullet. Could this be the mystery couple involved in the fish swap story Chris has just been told? Now you know about mullet? Uh, we actually got those given to us, yeah. Oh, OK. Yeah. A couple of chaps in a Toyota. Did you give them some fish? Yeah. yeah. You did? According to our friend from earlier, this beachside deal involved swapping mullet for snapper and gurnard. So what did you give them? Oh, a couple of gurnards, yes. Yeah. OK, and anything else? No. no. Nothing else? Not so. no Frustrated at being lied to, it's on to the next inspection. Two brothers returning from a fishing expedition. Good day's um, fishing. Yeah. Yeah. So you know all your sizes and yeah. limits yeah. and sweet. Champion. The brothers appear to be experts of the law and pull out one chilli bin full of fish. Who's keeping you for limits? So whose um, fish is this, this lot? Can you remove the camera, please? I don't have to. The class, I'm afraid. Can you remove the camera, please? 20 kilometres off the Kaipara coast, things are going from bad... This is the fourth day. What food there is is standing rotten. ...to worse for the crew of the Cheval de Mer. We met one. We have one back injury on board. Copied. Sailor Bill Clagg has fallen and injured his back. With that back injury, I reckon the risk of taking coming off would be higher than... Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So if, if the back injury can stay on, OK. With no rescue boat in sight and a winching operation proving too dangerous for the injured crew member, the sailors are going to have to hold tight. What is the weather like tomorrow? Southerly 40 knots. Very rough. It's more bad news for the crew, but from today with a new radio, they should be able to update rescue services of their progress. We're going to drop some things down to them. They've had communication problems in the past, so we're dropping them down to radio and uh, some uh, food items, some uh, fruit and uh, energy bars, as well as uh, one of the uh, local newspapers for them to read to pass the time. Getting the aid package into a rolling boat in the middle of a storm is a challenge. We'll run it from this position and uh, stick it between the dinghy and the deck. Copy. Uh, copy, we'll get on, we'll get on deck and wait for it. There's multiple hazards on the 
the boat. Yep. Uh, uh, immediate ones are that back sail and getting fouled up on the side. Yep. Has, there's also that main uh, mast moving around a fair bit. Okay, move forward, 10 and right. Well, that boat's moving around a fair bit. Move forward, 9 and right. Move forward, 6 and right. Your target. Move forward and right, 5. You're climbing. Yep. Move forward and right, 4. The weight is on the deck. We can move back and left. Target's at your 3 o'clock. On board, a crew member retrieves the package, but there is a problem. Steady there, steady there, steady. The high line is snagged on the mast. So left only, yeah. Left only three. The only option is to release the line. Okay, which one And the Cheval de Mer is left to tough out the coming days. Uh, everybody on shore is watching out for you, but... Uh, just as a recovery, it's uh, difficult for the boat to get over the bar at the moment. But uh, everyone's got their thinking caps on. I mean, speaking to your families, they, uh, they seem to have uh, best wishes in their life. They know you're capable of carrying it out. Uh, nice to know you then, boys. In Mutawai, fishery officers have pulled over two brothers claiming to have one chilli bin of fish. Now Chris has found another and the brothers aren't happy. Mind removing that camera, please? So whose fish is that like? Any more fish in, in the truck? OK, I'm just going to have a, have a look, OK? With the size of their catch just doubled, Chris looks a little deeper. I thought you said there was no more fish in the Why truck. Is one more bin there? They had one bin of fish and they said that's the only bin they had. I asked one of the gentlemen whether he had any more fish in the truck. He said no. Open the rear door, there's another bin full of fish. Once that was brought out, once again we asked the question, is there any more fish in the vehicle? Which he replied, no, there wasn't. Open the back door and there's another bin full of fish. The final tally of Snapper is well over the two brothers' entitlement. Although, according to them, they were doing the fish a favour. Tucked them back in the water, they were, they were going to die. So we'd pick them up and put them in a bin. But you know the legal number of Snapper, you learn. Okay. I believe it's around 45 snapper at the moment, and two of them are only allowed 20. So at the moment, the honorary fisher officers are just going to take some statements. We're going to give them back the legal entitlement of fish that they were allowed, which is pretty generous because we can actually confiscate the whole lot. So they'll be getting their 20 snapper back plus their gurnet and kawai, uh, but the rest will be seized and um, be disposed of back into the ocean later in the patrol. The two men were each fined $500 for excess snapper. Back off the Kaipara, another rough and uncomfortable night beyond the bar. The swells subside enough for an attempt at towing the Cheval de Mer to safety. The Coast Guard enlist the help of a hefty tug to make the attempt. We discovered them about 12 miles closer to the bar than they should have been. Yeah, they were very happy to get the end of that rope. And it's not a moment too soon. Another, what? Hour? I reckon they would have been on the bar. If they'd hit that, they would be now uh, looking for a funeral position. Coast Guard volunteers are now racing the outgoing tide to get the yacht safely home. We're going to struggle to get them up to Helensville as it is against the tide. Tide's starting to drop now. Before entering the narrow waters, the rescue team need to shorten the tow rope. There is one more hurdle for the exhausted crew. With the snag unravelled, it's mission accomplished. And finally, the men reach land. But there's no doubt it's been a close shave for these sailors. There was a bit of a fright there at one stage, yeah. But, um, yeah. So we're here, that's the main thing. We're not looking at the lid.